Okay, so today I'm going to go over how to do um, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division on the Burroughs Class 1. Uh, unfortunately, this is such a tall machine that I can't get a downshot of the keyboard, so I'll just tell you what I'm entering on the keyboard. So to do basic addition, you just enter um, you know, one number on each column. So like this is like all uh, four keyboard calculators. This is your ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. So if I wanted to add one to 123, I'd do one in the third column, two in the second column, and three in the first column here. And you just pull the handle. And you can see that the, the total register down here now displays one, two, three. You should be able to see that. And then from there, you would just go on with your second number, say 456. Just enter that. And 789. And we'll do 987. And if you make a mistake, that's what these, uh, you can either hit the clear key here, or you can clear columns individually. So this key clears the entire keyboard, whereas these keys clear each individual column. So this will only clear the column that's you know related to it. So 987, 654, and 321. And you can see that is our total 3,330. And then uh, we can't push the total button down yet because there's a carry pending. So when the total button's locked like this, you just pull the handle again. And now the total button is free. And we should be able to see our results. And that's about it for addition. So for subtraction, you can see also totally clears it out. So for subtraction, say we had 25, and we wanted to subtract 5. Now the only way to subtract on this machine is to use complements. Um, now some of these mach uh, machines like this had small numbers on the keys for the complements. This one does not, however, so you have to do the complements mentally. So um, basically, the complements are, um, you know, 10 minus your number um, minus one, essentially. So, for example, um, the complement of nine is zero. So it's 10 minus nine minus one. The complement of eight is two, um, and so on. So if we wanted to um, subtract five from this, uh, we would have to um, enter uh, four, which is the complement of five, but actually, we would want to enter um, one less than that. So we actually want to enter. We actually want to enter five here, which is yeah, because four is the complement of five less one would be a complement of four, which is five. Let me try and explain that better. Um, when you, whenever you're doing subtraction via complements, you always enter the the one less than or the complement of one less than. The number in the last column. So if we were doing, say we were subtracting 25, the number we would actually enter in complement form would be 24 because it's less 1 on the last digit. Since we're only subtracting 5, we want to do less 1 on 5, which would be 4, and then the complement of that is 5. Let me show you a little example. So this machine has the complements printed. You can see the small digits are the complements. So hopefully this will make it a little bit clearer. So as you can see, the complement of nine is zero. The complement of eight is one. And what we're looking at is the complement of five, which is four, and the complement of four, which is five. So like I was saying, we would want to enter the complement of one less than the number we're subtracting. So since we want to subtract five, we would enter the complement of four because four is one less than five that we were subtracting. And as you can see, the complement of four is five. And this would be much easier if the Burroughs machine had the complements printed on the keys, but it doesn't. So you kind of have to do it mentally, or if you want, you can use this as a reference just to tell you it. But hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of where I'm getting these complement numbers from. Um, they're just constants that, um, like I said, they're one less than 10 subtract 10 minus the number. So. You know, 10 minus 9 is 1, minus 1 is 0, the complement. 10 minus 3 is 7, minus 1 is 6, the complement. 
So I hope that makes sense. But that's how you do subtraction on the Burroughs machine. So now back to the Burroughs. Okay, so we've determined that we're going to enter 4 in that column. No, we're going to enter 5 in that column, if I pay attention to what I'm saying. We're going to enter 5 in this column because that's the complement of 1 less than 5, as we discussed. Now, the rest of the columns, we also have to enter something because of complements. So we want to enter all zeros in the rest of the columns, because we're going to do 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. And we want to subtract. So we also have to push down all the 9s, because the 9s are the complements of 0. And if we pull the handle here, we can see that we have now subtracted 5. So now we have 20, where we had 25 before. Now we can't push the total key, so we're going to have to play. Now we can push the total key. And it clears it out. And if we check our printout, You can see we had 25, we subtracted 5 using complements, and now we have 20. So subtraction is kind of a complicated process, but it is possible on this machine. So now let's do multiplication. We can do 625 times 625, and that is where the repeat key comes in. So we'll latch the repeat key down, and then we'll enter 625 on the right side of the keyboard. Now we enter the number of times of our least significant digit. So we're multiplying 625 times 625. So our multiplier, 625, the least significant digit is 5. So we're going to enter it 5 times. Now we have it entered 5 times. Now we can clear the keyboard and enter it one position over. So now it's from the fourth column to the second column, 625. And now we look at the second digit of a multiplier, which is 2, and we enter it 2 times. And then again we move over one column, and we look at the third digit of a multiplier, which is 6, so we enter it 6 times. Thus, our uh, last digit of the multiplier, so now we're done, and you can start answer there 390625. See, can we total? No. We still can total. Stop. Because I forgot to clear the keyboard. That was my mistake. Uh, we'll have to try this one again because we got to clear the keyboard before trying the total. So we'll clear this out. And we'll just try this one more time. 625, now repeat down. And we'll do five times. And then shift over. And then do it two times. And shift it over. And then do it six times. Now we need to clear the keyboard. There we go. So that was my mistake last time. I forgot to clear the keyboard before trying the total. As you can see, you have the correct answer there, 390625. So now let's move on to division. Division is even a little bit more complicated than multiplication because you have to use complements repeatedly but we will start by entering the number in the second to last column. Now if you have a machine that has a count, uh, accumulated position beyond the last column, um, you can do the last column, but in this case our, our last column is our last digit in the accumulator, but we need an extra digit past where we're entering, so we're going to enter it in the second to last column. So we'll start by entering 355, because we're going to do 355 divided by 113, which is an approximation for pi. So we'll enter our 355. And now we need the complement of 113 and um, less 1, as we discussed before. So your complements are always, the complement less 1 is what you enter. So uh, the complement of uh, 1 is 8. So we're going to do 8, 8, and then the 
the 113, but less 1 is 112, and the complement of 2 is 7, so we're going to push 7. And we want to repeat this. And the basic process for division is you look at the digit one place to the left of where you're entering. So we're entering in this column. So one place to the left is 0, so we don't have to do anything. And then we're going to enter the number. Um, and each time we enter it, we're going to check and see if the number directly below where we're entering is um, larger than the number we're entering. So we're entering 113 is the actual number, and we look at here, 113 is smaller than 355, so we enter it. Now we have 242. 113 is still smaller, so we enter again. Now we have 129. 113 is still smaller, so we enter again. Now we have 016. 113 is not smaller, so we have to stop. We're going to move over one column. I'm going to go over too many columns. And we're over one column, and now we're directly above 160, which is larger than 113, so we try again. And we also have to check, but we have a zero here to the left, so we're good. Now we have 047, which is smaller, so we stop and we move over one more column. Now we're directly above 470, which is larger, and our left digit is a zero, so we continue. 357 is still larger, 244 is still larger, 131 is still larger, 018 is not larger, so we move over. Our left digit is a 0, and 180 is larger than 113, so we continue. Now we have 067, which is not larger, so we need to move over again. Now we're directly above 670 which is larger, so we continue. Still larger. Still larger. Still larger. Still larger. 105 is not larger, so we must stop. Move over again. Now we have a 1 in this position, so before we even look at the number directly below us, we have to enter it one time. The 1 didn't change, so we continue by looking at the number directly below us, which is 937, which is larger, so we continue. And now we're not larger anymore, so we stop. We're at the edge of the machine, so this is as precise as we can get with this division. So, as you can see, everything to the left of these last three columns, because the last three columns are where we're still entering, but everything to the left of that is our um, quotient. As you can see, it's 314159, which is an approximation for pi. Now, the reason why we can't look at these digits is because um, we would have to do, you know, you'd have to continue on to get accurate results in these three columns. So you can only look at columns to the left of where you were working. As you can see, based on those columns, we have an approximation for pi. Can you see that? There. Look at that. Look at just those ones. That's the approximation. Like I said, if we had more columns, we could continue on and get accurate results in these columns, but we don't, so that's as far as we can get. So, that is a... Actually, I can, see, I should, uh, can total this out, too. Can we total? No. Go to the keyboard. Now we can total. So that's all the stuff we were entering, and that down there that is our result, so just those columns, 3.14, focus, 3.14159 is our approximation for pi. So that's a look at how you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on the Bose class 1. Um, the method for division is actually a, a method that was devised, well not necessarily devised by, but published by the uh, Comptometer company because their machines were similar to the Burroughs in that you can only do addition directly. But the method office also works on the Burroughs machine, so uh, maybe sometime we'll try the uh, Comptometer square root, because Comptometer had, uh, they had methods for everything. They put out a 600 page book of how you can do all kinds of calculations using only addition. So those methods should also be applicable to the Burroughs machine as well, and in the case of 
the first four functions, they are. So if you enjoyed this look at how you can do the four functions on the Rose class one, and thank you for watching.